Welcome back to another exciting YouTube video. And what we are talking about today, you're a guitar player. You got a guitar, you got an amp. You plug your guitar into your amp, mess with your EQ a little bit, there's your tone. But what if that is a tone that does not work for you? What if you love your guitar, but you're just missing something in your sound that helps identify you. Most great guitar players have their own sound. Uh, Brian May, for instance, from Queen. Undoubtedly, when you hear that guitar tone, you know it's Brian May. David Gilmour, of course. Eddie Van Halen. Shaping your sound is critical. And like I said, all great guitar players have their own signature tones. Now granted, you're probably not gonna have a signature tone like David Gilmour. Most of us will not. And unfortunately, in today's current crop of music, oh my God, especially back in the um, turn of the millennium, early 2000s, I couldn't tell one guitar player from the next. Everybody was playing PRSs with mess of boogies turned wide open, and they all sounded the same. I couldn't tell one guy from the next guy. Why that is, is because they were all playing the same damn guitars, playing through the same damn amp. Kind of hard to stick out of the crowd when everybody's doing the same thing over and over and over. Let's say you've got a guitar that you really like and you love the way it plays, but you just wish it had more highs or you wish it had more bottom or it had a little bit more mid range. Cause what you're doing is you're compensating through your amp by just overusing your EQ. Cause you gotta remember the EQ in your amp is there to shape your sound, not give you sound. That's not there to give you tone. So if you're taking your amp and you're pegging everything to 10, that's no tone. That's just an amp that's gonna be A, really loud with a lot of added gain because EQ essentially is a gain stage. And the more you bleed into that, the more gain that's gonna give you. So that's not how you solve a sound issue. You solve a sound issue right here. This is where you start. Now with everything being equal, if you're playing through a $50 guitar amp with a $3,000 guitar, chances are it's not gonna sound that good. But if you're playing a high quality guitar, we're gonna assume you've got some kind of high quality amp. Starting there with decent guitar, decent amp, now it's time to shape your tone. And the best way to shape it is starting right here with the pickups. I've been playing this guitar for 24 years. One of the first guitars I ever bought, right here. Um, 1996 Eddie Van Halen, Wolfgang, that is very dirty, needs to be cleaned up. I know the tone of this guitar. I know it, oh my God, like looking at my face in the mirror, I know the tone of this guitar. And I know what amps work really well with this guitar and what amps actually don't work that well with this guitar. I've played it through countless shows through, I can't tell you how many amps. Actually, I bought a Mesa Boogie triple rectifier it was horrible. It was just absolutely atrociously bad with this guitar. It was so bad that after we played the show, my bass player walked up to me and asked me when I was getting rid of that amp. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> He's like, dude, your tone on that thing is absolutely horrible. So I ended up leaving that amp and going off to a Marshall. Uh, Marshall JVM actually, and which suited this guitar very, very well because as we all know, that's where Eddie Van Halen cut his teeth. And even though he's had you know numerous guitars throughout the years and he's modified them and you know, continue to make continually makes them better. They all kind of come off that bass sound of that Frankenstrat with that Marshall tone. Even his 5153s are basically just over the top Marshalls. Um, good amp, good, very good amp. 5153 is a good amp. Actually, I have a Kemper now, and the sound. If you've watched any of my other videos, the sound that I use off my Kemper, which is somewhere, is uh. <laughs> is a, is a uh, EL3451-53. Uh, it's my main tone on my Kemper. But I know the sound of this guitar. So let's say I love this guitar, which I do, and I love the way it plays, I like the way it feels, I really like my amp, but I just there's just something missing in my tone. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna start right here. Now granted, I think you'd have to not be the smartest guy in the world to pull a set of EVH pickups out of an EVH guitar, considering they're absolutely made for the tonal characteristics of this guitar. But with that being said, you may love the guitar, but it just may not be your tone. And if that's the case, 
you get rid of the pickups, even if they're made for the guitar. So like I said, I, I know that the sound of this guitar, I know it's got uh, it's got some pretty good high ends on it, it's got some punchy mids, uh, it's got decent bottom end, it's not Les Paul bottom end by any stretch of the imagination. Why is it not Les Paul bottom end? Because of the combination of the guitar woods to the pickups. So with that being said, let's talk about guitar woods for a minute, because this is where we have to start understanding our tone. First thing we're going to start with is mahogany. Mahogany, which a lot of Les Pauls, PRSs, I mean, everybody uses mahogany. The nice thing about mahogany is mahogany has a very warm timber to it, and it's a very chunky bottom end. Mahogany guitars will have a, uh, a maple cap on the top to help balance out that tone. A solid mahogany guitar that thick, like on a Les Paul, is a very dark guitar, and you add a maple cap to balance out the tone of the mahogany. So we've got the bottom end of mahogany, the, the brightness of the maple, you put them together, it lands right in the middle. That's why mahogany maple is such a popular choice for guitar players, because it's a very balanced tone. Moving on from that, we move into basswood, or basswood, however you wanna call it. This guitar here is actually basswood, right here. Eddie Van Halen loves using basswood guitars. He does love it. He loves it because the tonal characteristics of basswood. Basswood is just, it's, it naturally has a very balanced sound. And with Eddie Van Halen's signature sound, which hell we all know and half of us have chased it, he likes the mids to be a little punchy in it. Therefore, he adds the maple top to the guitar because the maple top will help punctuate, uh, punch and accentuate the mids of the basswood. Alder has a very warm sound with very nice highs in it. Um, the thing I like about Alder is Alder is uh, kind of a scooped sound, a little less on the mid-range. I like that sound because to me it's just a bit of a smoother sound with uh, the, the uh, mid scooped a little bit. Swamp Ash has a very pleasant tone. It has a very uh, firm bass and it has a, it's kind of got some mid-range punch and it has very airy highs. Swamp Ash is very, very nice wood and uh, sounds fantastic. And there again, it, it sounds fantastic if that's the style you're playing on. Even though I have several guitars, I only play a few of them. Um, this being one of my main guitars and I've had 13 of these. And even when I, I had 13 all at one time and I had a white one. Same exact guitar of this, it was, this is a 96, I think that one was a 99, the Ivory White. I made a very bad mistake selling that guitar, and this is why. That guitar, same body, same neck, the bird's eye maple, front and back. Um, same pickups, same everything. But that guitar did not have a maple cap. That guitar was actually a bit darker than this guitar. And the differences were, to me were just uh, you know astounding how the two guitars sounded vastly different and it still had that Eddie Van Halen tone but it didn't have that mid-range bite into it and uh, a guy actually offered me a, a good price for that guitar and like an idiot I said yes so let's say you're playing a Jackson guitar and it's got a mahogany body on it and you absolutely love the guitar you love the way it plays you're happy with your amp but you still need to adjust your sound a little bit that is where we go into the pickups and we start adjusting there. Uh, you know, any, any pickup site, they're going to give you a good representation of what their pickup is. Sometimes you can listen to the pickups, sometimes you can't. Listening to pickups across the internet is not going to help you one iota choose a pickup for your guitar because A, you're going to be listening to a very compressed sound. B, you're going to have to find the pickup you're looking for, which hopefully they're playing the same exact guitar you got. Because if they're not, it's not going to sound that way in your guitar. Now, we're talking about pickups. We're not talking about active. We're talking about passive pickups. Active pickups, such as EMGs and so on. The nice thing about an EMG is EMGs, if, that's, if you like that sound, they sound great in everything. You can put an EMG in a brick and it will sound like an EMG pickup. But the thing about an EMG is EMGs do not rely on the tonal characteristics of the wood of the guitar. It relies more on its active circuitry to produce the sound. Passive pickups heavily rely on the tonal characteristics of your guitar. So for this video, we're going to be talking about passive pickups. 
and how to get the right pickup for your guitar. So on that note, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about magnets. All right, we're going to start with the Alnico 2 magnet. The Alnico 2 is a lower output magnet. It is very smooth and has a bit of warmth to it. Uh, Alnico 2, if you're doing a lot of blues, this would be a very good magnet for you to use. If you're doing some low gain stuff, this would be fantastic. Moving on to the Alnico 5, this magnet's probably been put in more pickups than every other combination in the world. Uh, the Alnico 5 is just a very good all around magnet for a guitar. The Alnico 5 has scoop mids and a very tight low end. Uh, it does provide a little bit of bite and a little bit of sparkle. Moving on to the Alnico 8, this is uh, basically between a ceramic and an Alnico 5. It is a very strong magnet and it has punchy upper mids but a little bit more warmth than, warmth than ceramic. Ceramic is an extremely strong magnet also, and it has a very bright tone. The nice thing about ceramic is in extremely heavy gain situations, ceramic still is incredibly articulate. So if you're into some serious heavy metal, and I mean heavy metal, ceramic's the way you're gonna to wanna to go because it'll still let those notes ring out as you move through and arpeggiate them, you will still be able to hear them. All right, so now we understand how magnets work and how magnets affect the tone of the pickup. Now, let's talk about some pickups. So, let's say you're playing through a Marshall amp. And we'll say a TSL, Triple Super Lead. Try to keep everything pretty even. If you're playing a Jackson guitar, Jackson guitar, has a mahogany body with a maple neck with an ebony fretboard. The nice thing about ebony is ebony is also a very snappy bright wood like very similar to maple. So if you're playing maple or uh, ebony, the tonal characteristics of the wood are gonna be extremely similar. So once you understand how bright and snappy your neck is, now we're working with the tonal characteristics of the body. So you have your Jackson and you like your amp, but your Jackson has just a little bit too much bottom end on it. It's a little too much on the heavy side. Everything else, for all intent and purposes, is not that bad. So if we look at this page here from DiMarzio, what we're looking at here are high output pickups from DiMarzio. The nice thing about DiMarzio's website, and I love DiMarzio pickups, absolutely love them, is they give you an output rating and that kind of puts everything in perspective when you're looking at all the other pickups. If you have an idea of what one particular one sounds like and you can see the output rating, it kind of gives you a, a very good jumping off place for all the other pickups on the output. The other nice thing I do like about DiMarzio is they give you your basically your EQ curve written out in numbers. So if the treble's sitting at five, it's right in the middle. <laughs> Anything above that's gonna be a little brighter, anything below that's gonna be a little less brighter. I really like that as opposed to Seymour Duncan. Seymour Duncan rates their pickups in resistance. And now when you start getting around 16 on the resistance, there again, you're really getting into a very high, very hot pickup. Um, and I don't like the way they do the EQ curves so much. They give you a graph on their site. I would rather have the numbers that DiMarzio uses. That is not why I'm a DiMarzio fan. I just think DiMarzio makes just fucking awesome pickups. But moving on to this, so let's say you got a Jackson and you have a tone zone in it. And like I said, the problem with your guitar is it's just got too much bottom in it. It's just, it's just not as tight as you want it. You can go to DiMarzio's website and we start looking here. Tone zone, DP155, has an output of 375. You're pretty happy with the output. You like the gain stage that your rig is producing. But if you look here at the bass, 8.5 that is huge on the bass scale and like I said let's for the sake of argument your Jackson is mahogany well when you got a mahogany guitar which produces all that natural bottom end the last thing you want to do is you want to have a pickup with that much bottom end in it also 8.5 is huge for that amount of mahogany that's why the guitar has the boomy bottom end on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to bring that bottom end down. Now you can also see here this has a mid-range of 8.5 and a treble of 5.0 on the tone zone. 
So we're happy with everything else the way the pickup sounds. If this was my guitar and I had this Jack Mahogany Jackson, this is what I would do. I would look for a pickup probably around the same output, maybe a touch more, touch less. I could go either way on that. But I would definitely want to bring that bass down a couple notches. And for me, I would bring the mids down a couple of notches and I would try to find something to give me a little more high end on the treble side on a mahogany guitar. So as we move through these pickups here, we can start putting, uh, start looking because they were just brilliant in the way that they outlined their pickups and given us the bass readout, the mid readout, and the treble readout with the output. Very easy for us to decipher which way we need to go next because we already know what the tone zone in this guitar sounds like. We've been playing it. We can see our EQ curve and we know our output. So now let's start putting the two together. We know we need to go with less bass because we're on a mahogany guitar. So let's start looking for something less bassy. So if we move up, let's say we jump up here to the Super 2. Now the Super 2 has a bass of 4. So this is going to bring our bottom end down quite a bit. Uh, I have a mid-range of 6. For me, that's good because that gets me off that 8.5 and, and brings me down to 6. Um, I'm going to like that. It's gonna, it's gonna, that's going to warm my tone up even more. And you got to remember, I'm cutting a lot of bottom end out of this. So I'm going to want to bring those mids down a little bit also to, give me, to keep some of that warmth. But this also punches out my highs. My treble now goes to an 8. So you're probably thinking, well, dude, that's a hell of a jump on a treble. That is true. We're still running a base of four, but we're also running through a big old fat piece of mahogany, which is going to give us a lot of natural low end also. So this pickup here actually may be a very, very good choice for that particular guitar. Because what we're doing is we're trying to balance out the wood to please the tone we're after. Now you can see our output is at 400, so we really didn't gain that much in output but we have shifted the EQ curve radically on this guitar. Now dropping in this Super 2 is going to give this guitar a completely different sound and a completely different vibe from the tone zone that is in there right now. So we get this pickup, we drop it in, wire everything together, all of a sudden now it's not enough bass. Now I've lost a little too much. Okay. This is, the, this is the trial and error of pickups. Just because you can read the numbers, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to pick the right pickup the first time. Unless you're sitting around with 500 pickups you've been playing through, it's still hard to pick up, pick up the tonal characteristics of all the pickups. Now that we've got our basically our starting point and our end point, now let's find the pickup we need. So we have an idea of what we're looking for. We don't want the booming mids of the tone zone, but we don't want... I mean the uh, booming bottom end of the tone zone, but we don't want such a loss of bottom end on the Super 2. So if we move through our list again, we come across the Steve Morse model. Has an output of 450, so this is going to be a bit more output. So we are going to be turning the gain down on our amp a little bit now. But we have a bass of 5.0, a mid of 7, and a treble of 6.5. So this may be the exact tone we're looking for. This is going to bring our bass down a bit. This is going to scoop our mids a little more. But it's also going to give us a little more treble because I like those airy highs. So that Steve Morse pickup, chances are, is going to be the perfect pickup to complement that mahogany guitar and balance out the tone of the guitar and the pickup. So now that I've got a pickup that is balanced out to the tonal wood of that guitar for the sound I'm after, for the tone I'm after, now I can start bringing on my EQs on my amp back. Now I can start shaping my sound instead of just floor, 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 peg, 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 and just all this noise and all this gain and everything just ripping out of this amp. Now I can actually start shaping a signature sound. The nice thing about doing it this way is there may be 50 people who have your guitar. There may be 50 people who play through the Steve Morse pickups, but there's not going to be 50 people who play that particular pickup through that guitar. So that's going to help start to sculpt your own sound. And once you find the sound that you like with your guitar, once you find your, the balance, 
then you can start working on everything else. But until you have the, the right pickups and the right guitar with the right wood to achieve the tone you're after, you'll be chasing that for the rest of your life. You have to start with the tool. And the tool is this. If this doesn't balance out and work well together, you can buy all the amps and effect, uh, effects pedals and boards you want. It's never going to sound right, and you're never going to get to the tone. Now, you might get a tone that you're happy with. It works. But you're not going to get a tone that you're excited about. Case in point, a friend of mine played diesel amps. Ever played diesel amps? Diesel this, diesel that, blah, 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 blah. Diesel, 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 diesel. He changed guitars. He went to a different guitar manufacturer. High-end guitar. Guess what? Diesel didn't work anymore. <laughs> it didn't matter what he did, he could not get that amp to work because the wood and the pickup had changed. So the tone of this no longer matched the tone of that diesel. So he would tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak. He never got a sound that he wanted. So he ended up changing amps. Still plays the same kind of guitar today because he likes the tonal characteristics of that guitar. But now he had to get an amp to compensate how much his guitar changed because when he changed from the two guitars, it was a vast difference in guitar. They sounded nothing alike. But the guitar he went to had a much more pleasing ear going after the tone he had in his head than the guitar he was playing. Well, all that tone came from this and this. And this tone was so good. And Diesel makes a damn good amp. Uh, personally, not my tone. I don't like the tone of a Diesel amp. But they're still a fantastic amp. It's just not for my ear. It doesn't work. But for the rig he went with, it didn't work for that either. So after he got the guitar situated, and he's got it situated pretty good right now. He's got his guitar, his woods, his pickups. It's working very nice for him. He ended up changing amps to something that was more after the tone in his head. Because when he changed guitars, the tone in his head completely went out the window with that diesel amp. So, in order to achieve the tone you're after, you have to start here. And I don't mean buy an Eddie Van Halen guitar. That's all I'm talking about. Figure out what you want to do. If you want a heavy bottom end, and I mean heavy bottom end, get a mahogany guitar. You want a pickup with a, with a very heavy bottom end also. I mean, as you can see, the tone zone uh, has an eight and a half on the bass side. That's huge. You drop that into a mahogany guitar, it is going to be fat on the bottom. And I mean fat. The downside of that is probably going to be a touch on the muddy too, uh, muddy side. So you're really going to have to watch your gain stages uh, and your EQs because it's kind of hard to EQ out mud. You really got to pull the gain all the way down on it. So that combination is probably going to be muddy but it's going to be just super bottom indie. But now that you kind of have an idea of how woods work, you saw how the magnets work and how that plays into a fact of the pickup. So now you want, well, I'm not going to say you understand, but now you have an idea of how to kind of start sculpting the sound of your pickup to match your guitar. If you have a mahogany body, for me, I don't want something, a pickup with a lot of bottom end. If I have a basswood body, I could use a little bottom end. When I personally am choosing a pickup, I try to keep my low ends around six for a, a normal style guitar. Now, if you're playing something like an Ibanez S series, that tone zone, actually not bad with that bass of 8.5 because it is mahogany, but you're also running with a piece of mahogany like this, not like this. So there's a huge difference in the width of the guitar as opposed to the tonal characteristics that it is going to correlate to, to the pickups. So keep all that in mind when you're choosing pickups. What type of wood I got? How thick is the wood? Do I want high end? Do I want bottom end? I know what I've got now. I just want to accentuate what I've got now. Do I want more gain? Do I want less gain? Those are all the questions you have to ask when you go to put a pickup in a guitar. And I'm going to tell you now, it is trial and error. You're not going to go out and buy one set and say, oh my God, that's the pickup. I can't count how many pickups I have bought. But with all the pickups I've bought, that gives me an extremely good jumping off point when I'm going after pickups. 
So, a lot of trial and error. You are going to have to buy some, but here's the good thing. And then we'll wrap this up. Once you know your starting off point, let's say, and like I said, you got a Jackson with a tone zone in it. You know your starting off point. That's an eight and a half on the bass. It's got an eight and a half in the mids. It's got a five on the treble. You're in a mahogany Jackson. It's too much damn bass. We've got to get rid of that bass. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna jump on here and we're gonna find a pickup that has less bass. We wanna get somewhere probably with that mahogany, probably around a six on the bass side and bring some of that boominess down out of that guitar because it's just too boomy on that guitar. Being that it is a mahogany guitar, I personally would like to have a little more treble. I want something with a little bit, you no, know, a little more air out of it. Um, I love those airy highs. I love them. And that's even like on my, uh, my uh, PA system. I love compression horns. I know everybody's using, you know, the JBLs and the, uh, the uh, Bose with the high mids. I'm sorry. They just don't sound as good. They sound great, but nothing sounds as good as a compression horn for those airy highs. You just simply cannot get them without having that horn. You're not going to get that out of a high mid uh, speaker. It's never going to happen. So I want something with a little more high end in it. So I already know I'm going to go down to about a six on the pickup. I want to go up to probably around a six to a seven on the highs. Honestly, I'd like to keep those mids around a six if I can find a pickup to suit me on that. So that is a extremely good starting point for me because I know what's in it. I know what I'm looking for. I also know how much I have to bleed in to my amp. On the guitar I've got now with this tone zone that has five on the treble, I'm having to push my mids on my, I mean my treble on my amp. Well, every time you increase that, you're increasing a gain stage and you're adding and adding and adding. So the point is to get that EQ back to here. That's where you want your EQ. So knowing I have the tone zone, if I jump up to that Steve Morse pickup, that's gonna balance out the tone I'm looking for in my head and start to help give me the sound that I'm looking for. Once I get all that set up, then hopefully your EQ is now just this. Now you're just, you're adding and subtracting little amounts. You're not doing this anymore. Because if you're doing this, then your problem is right here. The problem's not there. Keep that in mind next time you're looking for pickups. Think of that EQ. Think of the tone wood you got. How does it sound now and what's the sound you're after? DiMaggio makes it very simple for you. Seymour Duncan, not so much. I'm, I really don't like their setup, the way they would do it with resistance. But most companies do do it res with uh, resistance. If you go to Lace Sensor, they're gonna do the same thing, resistance. But when you're getting around 16, 17, 18, 19 on the resistance, those pickups are gonna be smoking hot, smoking hot pickups. So keep that in mind also. Uh, DiMaggio, they just make it simple. Love DiMaggio pickups, absolutely love DiMaggio pickups. So now you kind of have an idea of shaping your tone through your pickups, balancing out your guitar, because your overall tone is not gonna be out of your amp. That amp just helps accentuate your tone. Brian May, his tone is not that amp. His tone is that guitar, the pick that he uses, uh, the Burns pickups, which those pickups are very odd pickups. Nothing sounds like those pickups. But then when you treble it, treble it, when you couple that with the amp that he uses and the treble boosters and all this stuff, that's what gives him his tone. But if you take that guitar out of the equation, that tone is gone completely. Brian May's tone starts with that guitar. Eddie Van Halen's tone starts with that guitar. Uh, Mark Knopfler, his tone starts with that guitar. It's not the amps they're using. It's the guitar. And of course, don't get me wrong, a lot of that tone's here too. <laughs> I can play Eddie Van Halen's rig identical to what Eddie Van Halen plays and I sound nothing like Eddie Van Halen. He plays it, it's unmistakably Eddie Van Halen because a lot of that tone comes out of this too. The way he strikes the chord, the way he approaches the guitar, just the, the whole thing. But your jumping off point is your guitar. Get your guitar in balance. Once you get that in balance, you can get the rest of it in balance. Now all of a sudden you got a tone that you can be damn proud of and you're going to be happy and before you know it, 
You're going to be rocking every stage in America, selling out arenas, and just being the man simply because you listen to me and put the right damn pickup in your guitar. Because that's where it starts. On that note, that's probably a long-ass video just to go over some damn pickups, wasn't it? Probably was, but it's important shit. On that note, if you have any comments, put it down in the comments section. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments section, and I will answer your questions for you. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, as always, got all kinds of cool stuff coming up and things I'm going to be working out and working on and wrestling through. So until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, leave any questions or comments for me. Subscribe. And until then, get your sound right. Play hard and rock hard.